everyone welcome to this week's Thursday tutorial time hope you're all well and fingers crossed that we get decent internet tonight I have been testing the internet on my device and it seems to be working well so please as always do give me the thumbs up do pop me a note in the comments so I know you were present with me whether it's with me live or whether or not you're catching up a little bit later on so let's see who's going to be first in the house tonight it's Lydia followed by Francis good evening to you I hope you're all well so tonight's going to be all about Kumihimo now we know a lot of you have done Kumihimo before but it's always good to have a bit of a refresher and I've been really enjoying myself really sort of updating myself on tips and tricks um, on making Kumihimo which I hope to share with all of you as well so let's hope that you don't have any problems with commenting tonight um it seems to be okay hi june hello kim hello anne ah oh, sending condolences to you lydia um about losing your sister that that must be really hard but sending you lots of love and it's good to have you join us tonight so let's show you what we're going to make so hands up who has done Kumiimo before and please put a note in the comments if there's any niggles that you've had with Kumiimo anything that you want to perhaps highlight that you had problems with something that you found you had a problem with and you've managed to get a solution so here we go Kumiimo is basically done with a disc it's a simplified Japanese version. Now the traditional Japanese version is actually done on this wooden, it's like a wooden stand with a wooden circle that's got all of these bobbins that you move side to side. So this is I guess kind of a, a simplified version of that and we're using rat tail, not literally rat tail, it's like a form of satin but the good thing with Kumihimo is you can use ribbon, you can use sari silk, you can bead with it, you can add beads, you can use leather. There's so many different things you can do and it's not just this weave. There are so many different weaves. Now if you like the look of this, I am going to do more. I'm going to put it out there as to what you'd like to see. Now the necklace I'm wearing is actually all done with beads with a centre focus of a gemstone and some little dangles there. So let me see who's been doing some Kumihimo. keeps disappearing. Kim says she's done loads of Kumihimo and said she's never mastered beaded Kumihimo. Well hopefully we can address that. Kevin, hello, good evening to you. Francis has never done it before. Hello Lucy, good to have you join. So we will start with the basics and then we may do a patterned one, we may do beaded We'll see how it goes, but the main thing is really is to get comfortable with using the disc. Um, so, just to talk you through, at the moment I've got this on special for about a week and a half till Monday the 17th. So it's a full kit with written and photograph instructions. And with it, so it's reduced to 18.95. So with it, you get these three cards each has um, two different colours on, each being 38 inches times two on each card. You can mix and match them. You also get your Kumihimo board with it 
and you get your findings and by findings we mean these ends and the clasps what you need to add to it is your glue now the the glue I'd recommend for this project is E6000. I wouldn't recommend you buy E6000 Plus. I wouldn't recommend that because I find that it just, it's too, it's too wet and gooey and it doesn't seem to fuse that easily. I don't know if anybody else has found that E6000 Plus works for anything well for them. I'm not saying it's not any good. I just haven't found what it's right for. Uh, and Kumihimo is definitely not one so that's what I'd recommend you may find that if you've got a glue gun do it on a tester you know test on the end of your um, excess that you've cut off to see whether or not it sort of bonds well so that might be another option to save you going out and buying things you can just buy the disc as well which I think is £3.85. Now this middle bit pops out and what I'd recommend you do with that middle bit is keep it in there when it's dormant and write on there whether or not this is for standard Kumihimo or beaded because when you've used it for the standard one it stretches the grooves so that when you do the thinner thread for beaded it really doesn't hold so well. So that's my sort of top tip. So here is my Kumihimo board. I've got two different colours. Now we're going to start off with two different colours and we're going to block the two colours so that you get this candy cane effect. And so the general rule is between four and four and a half times the length of your wrist for each strand. So we're having four strands that are going to be doubled so the four strands become eight okay so each strand I've got is 38 inches and you should have some excess left so I've got one two three four so obviously you can do this project for a necklace but you are going to need more and I've put on some already um, prepared rat tail I think it's beadsmith that's long enough for you to make your necklaces all right so here we go I've got these four lengths they are one millimeter thick you can use between one mil and two mil thick you can use anything really but you need to bear in mind the thicker you go the bigger the ends that you will need for gluing in so I am using eight millimeter glue ends for this project. Those are available in the thread. So I've got both ends together. There's the center, the ends and the center. Now I find that, you know, the sandwich tag ties, I find these really useful. So I'm gonna pop that in the middle and to secure them all together, I'm gonna to twist like so. So we have now gone from four to eight strands. So bear with me, just check that I haven't missed anybody. Oh, I've not frozen again. Right, hopefully. So Tracy said, I've done loads and made some with Shirovsky. How lovely. Make sure you share those in the Beaders of Beads by Vichil. Oh, Trisha has her three-year-old granddaughter with her tonight. So she'll watch back later. You enjoy. Hello, Betsy. Great to hear you. Have you join? Carol said, I'm frozen. Hopefully that's not the case with everybody. And I do hope that it comes back. Hello Hilary, it's great to have you. I'm glad you like the necklace. This is Kumihimo as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in. I am doing this whole project real time. So you'll need to bear with me. Okay. So bear with me while I just set everything up. Can you in the feed pop the hearts just to let me know that 
it's okay and I've not frozen before I actually zoom in. Anybody? If you could do that for me, that would be fab. Not frozen. Oh, right. Okay, we'll go with it then. Brilliant. Okay, let's zoom in. I'm just going to get it at the right angle. Do pop any questions as you go. There we go. So on this board, you've got all numbers and you've got arrows that indicate which way the board moves after each move. However, I will show you a few top tips along the way. So you have number one pointing at the top and you'll have, so it's north, east, south, west. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna group the threads. So where we've got this tag tie, I'm gonna pop that in the middle and just hold that with my non-dominant hand in the center. So we're going to start off, first of all, by securing one of the colours, it doesn't matter which, in between the two slots to the left of the centre. So it's between 32 and 1. So find its partner and slot that down at an angle. So you've got one to this side, one to that side at the bottom. Now we're going to block the colours of this one, so we're going to slot the same colour to the side. And then we're going to actually pop that at a diagonal straight opposite between 17 and 18. So with the other two colours we're going to do the same, but on the other side of the board. So I'm just going to find its partner which is there. So again, we're doing a diagonal. One is below the line, one is above the line. So just to recap, you've got, try and keep this in the centre. So you've got two at the top, two at the bottom, two either side in block colours. Now, it will move around the board, so you only start at this point at the beginning. If you're going to have a break at some point, what I suggest is that you just hook your thread at the side so that when you pick it up, you know where you're going next. So, we go top right to bottom right and you secure it in these little slots then we go bottom left to top left now i'm going to quarter turn this way so we've just done this one these are raised and then we're going to go this way So, I'm just trying to work out, because I'm actually doing this opposite. So we are going anti-clockwise. Top right to bottom right. Bottom left to top left. When you finish that group, turn. So you're following where the arrows are going. Top right to bottom right, bottom left, to top left, and quarter turn. So a quarter turn is just going to the next group of threads. So I'm just going to hold this and show you, and then I'm going to move it so it's a little bit more comfortable for me to actually do the braid quickly. So top right, to bottom right. You can use different thicknesses as well. And can you see that the, the last group that I worked uh, at the bottom, so the, the group that I've just worked erased, and 
A little bit later on, I'm going to give you a few top tips about working the weave. Something that I didn't know until I myself had just been doing some refreshes and really enjoying myself doing some new projects. So that really is your whole thing, quarter turn. So remember this, top right to bottom right, bottom far left to top far left, quarter turn anti-clockwise. To be honest, it doesn't matter if you turn it the other way, if it feels more natural to you, you will get the same effect. All right, so I am just going to do this as it's a bit more comfortable. Now, Sometimes people like to use a weight. Personally, I don't feel the need to use a weight with basic Kumihimo. Uh, if you do, for the general weight, it's normally recommended 50 grams. The reason why people use a weight is it's meant to actually help create a neater weave. It also helps if you're doing beaded kumihimo as well but again it's not essential now i have not personally i find that the i think it's beadalon i'm not keen on their weights um there's one that prumihimo uses she is an amazing um braider and so many absolutely wonderful patterns do check her out on youtube i think she's on facebook as well um and she uses one that's like a bulldog type clip and i think i'm going to see if i can invest in some of those because they seem to be the simplest way of attaching so in a moment i am going to show you what it looks like underneath and also how quickly it forms because I'm going to do it all in real time and show you how to finish off. There are quite a few different ways to finish off Kumihimo and if you want to spend a session on that, do let me know. Now, there's also a bit of stretchability in this as well. So I also find the other way to know where your last move is to have three at the bottom. So let's turn over. And what you can do is actually pinch and stretch it. So that's how. And with grouping these two and two, you get this really lovely candy cane shape. Now, try and keep them nice and taut try and keep them in the middle now i know people use these sometimes for collars pets collars um it really is pretty robust you could use them as curtain tie backs you could use them for bag handles you could even use them for belts lovely unisex um bracelet to do it in leather you could combine leather with the rat tail um, you can also buy sterling silver findings we are going to do the glue method tonight now the glue method is where we've got the ends that we glue on the other method that you can do as well is to use either what they call end caps or bead sorry cone ends or the bead caps where you actually have a head pin and you secure it that way the other way is you can do a button fastening as well so perhaps if someone has an allergy to metals So apologies if it's a bit boring to watch me do this, but you'll be able to see how super quick it comes together. Um, 
I'm just trying to think. Pop a note in the comments if you can think of any other thing that these could be used for. Um, there is a couple of Kumihimo projects that we did a year or so ago where you do part Kumihimo, part elasticated bracelet. And we also did a small project with beaded earrings as well. I will share those in the group over the next couple of days. When you're doing the length of these, do take into account the length of your clasp as well. Because obviously you're going to need to think about that as well so that your bracelet's not too long. It's a lot easier if it's shortest because you could add an extender on it. This is a fab project to do with kids, grandkids, as well as adults. And there's so many, you can do any colour combination. If you've got somebody that's got their favourite football team, um, perhaps they've got college colours, you know, you could gift gift them something really special i suppose you could even use it as um piping you know piping on a pillow right how are we doing so you can see how quickly now i do tend to stretch mine out because i actually quite like the effect of that so that is three inches already so i might end up just doing a mini bracelet depends how we do for time so like i say just take into account how long your clasps are for and what i'm going to show you as well is how you take the ends off, how you secure it, also how you attach the clasps on the ends. So, you know, what is the difference between um, the clasps that come preformed? Now, I'm going to show you something else. Now, there's something called the to and fro method. So if you want to do super quick, whereas you normally go this way, because it doesn't matter, you can actually go back this way. And it does exactly the same. Rock between both of them. Two. So they call it the to and fro method. And would you believe it's only with this particular braid that you can do it, but it saves you keep switching between everything. So that's the other thing that you can do as well is literally because you're not crossing over any of the threads. You can keep doing this. And I have to confess until the other day, I didn't know that. And I thought, that's pretty good. I mean, it doesn't save that much time. However, it's nice to know. Right. So just do a little bit more. So I'm doing the to and fro method now. 
So I don't want to confuse you, but, you know, it's really good to know the fact that you can twist this braid round. It doesn't matter. It's always a good habit to get into to know the basics, because when you do something like, for example, what I was having a practice at earlier was to do a lot of the patterned ones. You need eight strands that become 16 when you halve them. And you're going to need that method that we started off with. Which is where you top down top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left. So pop me a note in the comments. Did you know about the to and fro method? So I think that is enough for us to do a sample. But what I just want to do, I'm just going to grab something to show you. I want to show you the different types of clasps that we've actually got. I just hope, oh, there we go, if I can find them. Okay, so you've got, Let's push this out of the way. You've got a toggle clasp, which is where you pop that through there. And you would glue that on. That's that type. Then you've got a hook and loop. So again, you'd glue that in. The type that we're using tonight is these they are eight millimeter because i like to have sufficient room and what we're going to do is we're going to add the clasps and they come in different sort of colors and sizes so you will need to you know adjust the size accordingly now the other thing is like, for example, on the beaded one I've got, because you're using fine thread, you'd go for a smaller end. OK, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to show you how to attach the clasp. Now, the other thing you can always do is you've got these little hangers. So if you want a gem or something, you can slide that on and attach a charm or something on there. So what you're going to need is a clasp, either a jump ring or an extender chain, or just cut off a little bit of chain as well, if you prefer. You know, you don't have to buy pre-prepared extender chains. So we're going to add a clasp to one end, and I'm going to add the extender to the other. I recommend doing this before you glue the clasp. So for, for those of you that are new, I've got parallel pliers or flat nose pliers. I'm going to grip one side. This, these are jump rings that are open and the slit is at 12 o'clock. Now you can use chain nose or bent nose and what you do is you open that up. Now let's just zoom in. The reason why I attach the clasp straight away is because if you start doing it once the glue is attached, you might start messing around with the setting. So that loop at the end is going on there. And then we're going to close that up so that they join in the middle, the jump ring, and close that up. So that's one end. So when I'm telling you to take into account the length, I would measure that. So open that up, pop that on there. Uh, 
okay and close that up so when they come without anything on that's basically what you do so you've got your clasp attachment at the ready okay now let's go back to our braid now before you take it off the board have a feel what's on the top so we've got the light purple that are raised on the top we are going to tie a knot with the ones on the underneath and two opposite threads it doesn't matter wh which so i'm taking these two off and we're going to tie a temporary knot just an overhand knot and then take this off now the one end where the tag tie is you can simply undo that and quite confidently know that your braid won't come undone so slip that out now for the other end <coughs> i am going to show you how we tie it off now i've got a contrast in color so that you can see it a little bit better And the best way to do it, so I've cut a length about 10 centimetres. So I have both ends together and form a loop in the middle. Okay, pop the loop underneath. So we're going near the end where you've got all of these, all of these end threads. So there's your loop, there's your ends. I think this is what they call a slip knot. So I'm going to slide that up and pull. And then I'm going to hold one end and wrap the other around just to secure it. Now I have my hair clip at the ready because from experience I have glued my hair before and uh, it's not the best experience when you've got really long hair. What I'm doing is just an overhand knot and I'm doing two. Make sure it's really secure and then we can undo that temporary knot. So we're going to cut off the excess, probably cut off one by one with a good sharp pair of scissors. You don't want too much excess on here and just trim those tails off. Now don't throw these because you can use these to make your own tassels. Now just putting my hair up. So we've got the glue end and the other glue end. Now I use an old laminated piece just to, to pop my glue on. Um, you know, the old yoghurt pots, that'll be okay. So I'll pop that, a little bit of glue on there. I like to use a cocktail stick or maybe, you know, some wire that you've got going spare. Now the good thing is, if you make a bit of a mess, this, it does come off. You know, on the outside, you can pull it off. So I'm going to line that in the inside and if you want to be doubly sure you can just pop a few dabs on that as well. So we're going to go pop that inside that gluing end. Now just give it a good squeeze together for about 30 seconds. Now, if you were going to add one of these, you would 
pop that on there before you secure it the other end okay so the other end we're going to do exactly the same is line that in the inside give it a little bit of extra dab and again secure that in you would then leave that for 24 hours and avoid the temptation to try it on now it does fuse quite quickly together um, but the drying time really is 24 hours so you've established your braid you've got really nice professional finish so this is the finished piece that's been done earlier so you've got your little extender chain on there you've got your lobster clasp and it really is a beautiful little piece so let's see how you found that right. how did you all find that so wendy said she loves the look of these maxine said that's very pretty Wendy said mine my always come out so thick so I haven't got ends big enough that's a real key as well Wendy it's and you know what sometimes it's trial and error because I've ordered things that are eight millimeter and they come back and you measure them and they're six mil diameter so you know what I'd say is when you've got the one that you want stick with it now the ones that are actually in my group are the ones that I use tonight they're eight eight to eight and a half and also the I love these I think these are really good unisex ones those are really generous ones as well so you know and equally if you're using thinner thread you might find that it's a bit you know you've got a little bit knocking around at the sides as well no worry so wendy's gonna watch on the replay video a bit jumpy oh sorry to hear that deb hello deb she has to go no problem thank you for joining oh right okay so this was the first project that you did with me that's good to hear so Saba says she's never done Kumihimo and starting to light after watching the live session. Can I show the glue? Yes, of course. So it's E E6000. And to be honest with you, I buy mine from eBay, from the UK. Because sometimes when you buy from China, you get the copy, you know, not the real thing. Um so that's that's what I use and I love the finished um, element on those as well. So do make sure that you like the post and you comment. So for tonight's giveaway, um, even if you've got Kumihimo before, like I said, it's really, really handy to have more so that you have them for separate projects. And don't forget, use that to write sort of what you use that for. It could be wire as well. So I'm going to be giving a plain Kumihimo board to one lucky winner tonight. And I will announce it tomorrow. So anybody that's watched tonight and commented, it doesn't have to be in the live stream. And the other thing was, thank you so much for all of your suggestions. I have got a really good list that I can work on. I think a common theme for working on this year, sorry, I should have said, for all your suggestions for what you'd like from the group and for demonstration this year, a common theme seems to be you'd really like ideas on finishing, um, more bead embroidery, more bead weaving, to be honest there's a really good selection um on on everything which is wonderful 
and also having a group chat as well perhaps about things like what you do for your storage so we've got lots to work on and I did say that I would announce a winner now I don't think she's actually in the feed tonight um, but uh, the winner that will have a kit um, I will send you options of which kits that you can choose from is Catherine um, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce her surname because I can't I can't remember your surname but it's actually Catherine that's one I will tag her in the post so that on the um, January post as well so that she knows she's a winner but thanks ever so much and if you've got any more ideas just keep popping them in the group so yes Ke uh, Kevin I could do a demo on the flat ones I know you mentioned that to me a while back could you do me a favor could you pop that in the comments for the January suggestions and at least that way it's a reminder for me to do that um oh right okay E6000 I am not aware of anything but I I don't know Wendy all I would say with, with any glues is that you need to use a well ventilated room but one of the things I like about the E6000 is that it's not um, that there's not a strong aroma with it as well thank you Nora it's good to have you you said something about E6000 plus okay just before you go the E6000 Plus, I wouldn't recommend it for this project because it's really slippery and slimy um, and it doesn't dry that quickly. Um, this tassel necklace, is that what you mean? Or the one that I posted? Let me know. This one is Kimihimo. Anyway, I'll be posting, so I'd really like your choices for next week. Um, and I think that's it for now. There's bound to be more. But don't forget, these are on special for the next week or so. You can reserve them in the group and there are threads in there that are long enough to make necklaces that are coming up in the feed. You take care. Bye.